With that, we will move to uh, item 7.6, presentation and discussion on proposed routes to ensure compliance with Senate Bill 552 and B, identify and authorize the most viable route as recommended for Lake County's compliance with Senate Bill 552. This will be presented by Water Resources, and it looks like we have Deputy uh, uh, Deputy Director Delajana here, and she will report or uh, present. So, with that, I will give the floor to her once she gets situated. So, you can tell the younger generation just comes in and plugs around. <laughs> The rest are like, the oh? rest are like, what? Oh, <laughs> where does this go? Okay, I already asked Sam earlier, but just in case I mess up, can you please help me? It, it was better before you said that. Supervisor Scott. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep getting longer. <laughs> well, this one will be a fun one, I promise. Awesome. Act. Right, we're waiting. I appreciate no, wrong, you being one. out on yeah. Saturday to wrong one. the community. Wrong one. Yeah, if you can close that one, that's what we were just doing. I'm so sorry that I interrupted you, Supervisor Scott. I don't know. Just thanking her for being out on Saturday, um, answering community questions about the lake. That was great. My husband actually had a question. I'm like, look, here's somebody here you can ask. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I Not was that one. Very exhausted. The one to the right. The fun the fact. Right one. Yep. Fun so facts. Many, yeah. So many fun facts. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate it. Are we good to go? We're ready. Great. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, board. Thank you so much for having me. Marina Delajanis, Deputy Water Resources Director. I am here for um, the item. I have two parts to this item. The first part of this item, as outlined in the memorandum, is a presentation and discussion on proposed routes to ensure compliance with Senate Bill 552. And the latter part of this presentation and discussion will be identification and authorization of the most viable route as recommended for Lake County's compliance with SB 552. And at any point, I definitely welcome the expertise and guidance from our CAO and our County Council. Um, and then I will take any questions after the presentation. All right, so today's talking points. Again, I will be doing an overview of SB 552. Again, I will not be reading the entire Senate bill, but I do have a link to this, and the link is outlined in the memorandum. I will be highlighting the requirements as um, SB 552. I will propose a recommendation for our SB 552 compliance. Anticipated hurdles, because it can't all be rainbows and butterflies, of course. So anticipated hurdles um, in terms of our compliance with SB 552. And of course, we have to have a saving grace, right? So I will have anticipated resources that we will be able to utilize to comply with SB 552. And then proposing a rough timeline um, or an outline of next steps. So, one second, I apologize. All right, so Senate bill um, referred to as SB 552 was passed and signed by Gavin Newsom in September of 2021. SB 552 outlines that state and local governments will share the responsibility in preparing and acting in the case of water shortage events. These new requirements are expected to improve the ability of Californians to manage future droughts and help prevent catastrophic impacts on drinking water for communities vulnerable to impacts of climate change. The bill outlines the new requirements for small water suppliers, county governments, 
California Department of Water Resources, and the State Water Resources Control Board to implement more proactive drought planning and be better prepared for future water shortage events or dry years. Here is a high level framework of the requirements. So SB 552 outlines requirements again for the state. When I refer to the state, I am talking about the California Department of Water Resources and the State Water Resources Control Board, local governments, counties such as ours, and then small water suppliers. So starting at the top of the pyramid here, what SB 552 will require of the state is um, the re would require the departments to take specified actions to, to support implementation of the recommendations from the county drought advisory group. So with this, they will have a standing interagency drought task force, which they have had um, over the past year. And we have a representative who we communicate with directly and on a routine basis from the stand standing drought task force. And they will also help with the planning and coordination of pre and post drought emergency response. In terms of the county, this bill would require a county to establish a st standing county drought and water shortage task force to facilitate drought and water shortage preparedness for state small water systems and domestic wells within the county's jurisdiction as provided. The bill would authorize a county in lieu of establishing a standing task force to establish an, an alternative process that facilitates drought and water shortage preparedness for state small water systems and domestic wells within the county's jurisdiction as provided. So with this, we can take one or two routes. One, we can establish a standing drought task force and prepare a comprehensive drought plan that talks about short-term and long-term planning, um, pre and post drought impacts, or we can decide on an alternative process ourselves, which is relatively in flux, and that will be us here at the local level to develop, run by the state, and see if they give us a thumbs up for that. In terms of small water suppliers, so this bill would require small water suppliers as defined serving 1,000 to 2,999 service connection, inclusive and non-transient non-community water systems that are schools no later than July 1st, 2023 to develop and maintain an abridged water shortage contingency plan that includes specified drought planning elements. This bill would require a small water supplier serving fewer than 1,000 service connections to add drought planning elements to its emergency notification or response plan and submit a plan to the state board. This plan or this bill also requires that these water supply suppliers provide annual reporting on water supply and any infrastructure upgrades if necessary. As we are all aware, this, the state has had some drought emergency funds, which a lot of our water purveyors around the county have utilized in terms of doing any sort of extensions of their water intake pipes or extra water storage facilities. Also, a lot of our water purveyors have already been working on their water contingency plan and coordinating with the state for assistance on that. So my recommendation, I do apologize, this one is very wordy, but it is outlined in the memo as well. I usually like to add lots of pretty graphics, um, but I wanted to be very clear with what I was recommending to the board. In terms of our compliance, this is a five-pronged approach. Um, so the first one would be to reform the work group's name that we currently have from the County Comprehensive Drought Planning Work Group to the Lake County Drought Task Force. The participants of the orig original work group as um, as elected by the board will remain the same. The second prong to this approach would be identify the current Lake County Drought Task Force, which again is a non-board appointed group of interested stakeholders. This group was developed by AmeriCorps Civic Spark Fellows over a year ago. Have this group serve as an advisory committee to the bonafide and reauthorized Lake County Drought Task Force. This would result in the original Lake County Drought Task Force group now being identified as the Lake County Drought Task Force Advisory Committee. For folks that are aware, this is very similar to how we, um, how we complied with the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, Act. So we have our Groundwater Sustainability Agency and then our Groundwater Sustainability Agency Advisory Committee. So a group of interested stakeholders and the expertise to serve as an advisory committee to the Lake County Drought Task Force. The third prong would be invite representatives from tribal, agriculture, cannabis, recreation, business, education, private well owners, environmental groups, and private water purveyors to participate 
and the Lake County Drought Task Force Advisory Committee. We have a few of these uses and users represented, but we are missing a few, and I know I have been in conversations with a few folks, especially from ag and cannabis, who are interested in serving in this advisory capacity if this is the route that the county decides to go on. And then the fourth one would be receive recommendation from the Lake County Drought Task Force on a reoccurring basis, or excuse me, Lake County Drought Task Force Advisory Committee on a reoccurring basis to ensure compliance with SB 552 is being met and that the development of the drought planning and practices are developed and implemented in good faith effort. And the fifth one, the Lake County Drought Task Force in compliance with SB 552 facilitate drought and water shortage preparedness for state small water systems and domestic wells within the county's jurisdiction and de develop a plan that includes potential drought and water shortage risk and proposed interim and long-term solutions. So that's a lot uh, to go on. With that, um, I did outline a few hurdles. These are not new hurdles that our county has not faced in terms of complying with other state mandates. The biggest one would be is funding allocations for drought management planning and coordination. So one, funds to actually develop this plan and two, funds for the, the coordination and the management of this plan. It will take um, a lot of, not a lot of folks, but it will take folks and expertise to help with the actual coordination management. We could decide down the road how we actually go about that. Um, but one, funding allocation for the compliance of SB 552, especially as it relates to our drought management plan. The second one, of course, is management and oversight for state mandated program. So deciding which department is going to be the um, overseer of this and then the management aspects of it. So guidance to staff on how we move forward with that and ensuring that we have a representative and a program for this. Um, again, just going off of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, this will be a state um, a state mandated program. So of course they will be providing resources and um, technical support services. The state is developing that now. So there are gonna be some resources that I'll get to in the next slide that we can lean on. But again, deciding on who will be looking out for those resources and those, um, those um, that we could utilize. And then of course, state deadlines, our favorite thing, right? So they give us what we have to do with that. They also give us deadlines that we'll be needing to meet um, but again, just coordinating with the state and making sure that we are doing everything that we can in our best faith effort. We know that this is not the first drought we faced, nor will it be the last drought. Um, but there are a lot of things to consider in terms of our drought management, especially as it relates to short-term short and then long-term planning to make sure that all uses and users throughout the community have um, reliable water supplies. Resources. So again, um, we have been in close coordination with our friends at the state. They are actively working on resources. They are actively reaching out to us to see what would be most beneficial for us. Um, again, it's not just easy as throwing money out there, right? That's not always the solving of everything. It's who's gonna be able to find those funds, who's gonna manage those funds, and what can we do to lean on? How can we lean on the state to make sure that they're helping us as we, as we help our community? So some anticipated resources that are coming out and that um, will be coming out in the near future are SB 552 guidance and support workshops. These are anticipated to start in early June. From my understanding, there's gonna be a series of four workshops. The first few are gonna be through um, with internal um, county personnel. So I envision that our comprehensive drought planning work group would be invited to that. Um, and I'm more than happy to facilitate those, the information on those work groups to the board. Second is guidance documents. The um, California Department of Water Resources, they have a website right now and you can see the link at the bottom of the slide. They're actively updating this for available resources, guiding material for not only um, the state, um, the small water suppliers, but also the counties as well. And then folks that are um, being impacted by drought. Again, they're planning on releasing more documents by summer 2022. And again, of course, additional outreach material and direct technical assistance opportunities. So a rough, um, a rough roadmap of our compliance and next steps. So I highlighted a few key points that we will need to accomplish. So again, hopefully today we'll be able to identify the most viable route, secure or allocate funding. I don't anticipate that will take place today. I anticipate that'll be um, a longstanding discussion. Again, provide guidance to staff and departments with program management. 
identify and onboard necessary expertise. So even though we have a lot of expertise with the current Lake County Drought Task Force and folks around the county, we are going to need to develop an entire plan, which we have not done here at the county in terms of drought management and planning. And then lastly would be develop and submit a comprehensive drought management plan. So again, this is a state mandated program. So this is going to be a long going effort. Um, even once we submit the plan, we're still going to have to withhold everything that we outline in our plan, similar to our Big Valley Groundwater Sustainability Plan. And then this, this is just a little refresher. I know there's lots of confusion in terms of the current drought groups that we have here throughout the county. So just a reminder, we have the County OES 2021 Drought EOC, the Lake County Comprehensive Drought Planning Work Group, which was initiated by the Lake County of Lake Board of Supervisors. My recommendation, again, is to change the name of that to the Lake County Drought Task Force, have the same seating members as outlined, as you guys um, as you guys elected, and then also the Lake County Drought, um, the Lake County Drought Task Force initiated by DWR and the AmeriCorps Fellows serve as the Lake County Drought Task Force Advisory Committee. With that, I will go back to the recommendations and um, ask the board for any questions or comments. <laughs> Ms. Grant, did you have something? Just in regard to Brown Act compliance, if, if I might just inquire or ask your board to inquire as to some clarification, the recommendation is to reform the work group's name uh, to the Lake County Drought Task Force, the participants of the original work group will remain the same. So I'm assuming that means that the board would take action, uh, if it agrees with that, to rename the group, reappoint those individuals, clarify that it would be Brown Act compliant, and move forward. And add additional seats as the board chooses. Exactly. Thank you. Um, the second recommendation is to identify the current Lake County Task Force Drought Task Force, a non-board appointed group of interested stakeholders as an advisory committee. Is that also intended then to be Brown Act compliant? Yes. So, Ms. Grant, similar to the advisory, I'm sorry, I feel like I can't look at you and speak into the mic. Um, so with that, it, I would envision that it would follow very similar to our Groundwater Sustainability Plan Advisory Committee which we did have a charter document and we did bring to the board the approval of those seating documents. So with that, we have seats, we have names um, of who is, who is representing a use or user, and then we cannot, have, we cannot nominate someone to fill those seats unless we bring it back to the board. And we do follow Brown Act compliance with that. All right, so then it would be the board would be creating essentially or reconfirming in at least one instance, two separate Brown Act compliant groups. Right, and, and for the first group, I presume the board would want board staff to advertise in the normal manner you do for any seats you create for that, I assume. I would hope. Yes, if we create new seats. Yes, yes to if create, create the new seats mm -hmm. beyond right. the, the, the original group just is department heads and two members of your board. Yes. So if you're mm -hmm. creating additional seats, yes, we would recruit for them. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Any questions? Supervisor Spati. Thank you very much. Um, every day uh, it becomes a, that much more important of a conversation to, to have, to prepare. Uh, and I see this again as uh, long-term plans rather than just dealing with the current drought. I think this will much better prepare us for future droughts as well. Um, I am in approval of going with your recommendation uh, and moving forward uh, as such. And thank you again for bringing this back to us so we can finally get our feet on, on the ground and, and get started. Supervisor Paiska. So for the group formerly known as... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I apologize. It's very confusing. I get tongue-tied too. <laughs> so the comprehensive uh, drought group that we've already created has the department heads and two board members. And so that would um, move to be Brown Act compliant and public facing. And so maybe my suggestion there would be to add, um, we don't want to add all the seats that are in the advisory group, but maybe two members from that advisory group so that you've got somebody there um, from the 
I'll just say from the public, yeah. um, that's not in the county. So that would be my suggestion for that group. Um, and then, you know, you, you brought the capacity issue up and who's going to manage this beast and do we need to make a hire or contract this out? Because I know that um, while I would appreciate you taking this on, I don't know that you have the capacity to, to, to manage it in the way that it needs to be managed. And so I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for that. Yeah, so what I've noticed um, through my research so far and just speaking with the state, um, again, I would love to take this on entirely, but I can feel my director's eyes beaming from the third floor at me. Um, yes, I do not have the capacity to carry this on myself, nor do I have all the expertise. So my recommendation is that we would go through, you know, the county purchasing code and do onboard a consultant to bring on this work and actually make sure that we can comply with SB 552. That's the beauty of having expertise and consultants who have built many drought management plans throughout the state, especially as it relates to SB 552. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. And then you feel like the resources could come from the state to pay for that consultant, or is that what we have to come up with? Yeah, so that's what I have asked from the state. Again, um, we've been in correspondence with them the last year. One of my um, asks was similar to the, the resources, and again, I'm just going to keep on bringing it back to groundwater because I have to, right? But the resources that we've been able to receive from the California Department of Water Resources as it relates to our compliance with Sigma, they've been able to offer facilitation support services. So we've been able to use facilitators, professional facilitators, to help us with the onboarding and development of our, you know, GSA, the GSPAC, the charter documents, the contractors, et cetera, um, and our stakeholders. And then also we were able to be awarded funds from California Department of Water Resources for the de development of our GSP. So I've um, asked if we could have something very similar to that for this state mandated, pro mandated program. And I know that's something that the state is looking at. Another thing that is required by SB 552, that since it is a state mandated program, they do have to do a certain amount of reimbursement. How that's gonna look like, I'm not quite sure, but they are tasked with providing available resources, including monies to help us make sure that we remain compliant. Great. Yes. And does it make sense to um, engage Civic Sparks? to support this also? Yeah, so this is something that Civic Spark Fellows have done throughout the state in terms of drought management and climate action plans. So that could be one resources that we as the county can look at onboarding, you know, assistance from an, an AmeriCorps or Civic Spark Fellow, or I know there are other similar state opportunities, but um, again, they're not gonna be the entire professionals, right? It's a fellowship, mentorship, et cetera. But this is a perfect project. I know back in my Civic Spark day, I would love this. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great opportunity so is um, your department already um, looking at onboarding sparks for the year or is this something that we should look for additionally? Because this is, I mean, the, the, they're great for getting out in the community and doing that boots on the ground work and engaging. So that would, just wondering where you, do you already have them lined up or do we yes. need to look at that? So we have a current fellow now who's doing a shoreline assessment um, and doing outreach. We are having a fellow next year to help with our aquatic invasive species program. I know that the fellowship application, they are taking applications now for fellows. I believe they are close to closing their project site applications, but I could always reach out to our friends at the local government commission and Civic Well who oversee the Civic Spark program to see that this is something that if we could possibly put in another project for. Um, again, they're always looking for opportunities of this nature. Their whole, that whole program's um, perspective is to fill in capacity. And this is definitely something that we need help building capacity with. Yep, excellent. Yeah. Absolutely. CEO Hutchinson, I, I think you had your hand up earlier. Well, my question was about funding, how a consultant would be paid for. So thank you for asking <laughs> the standard CAO question, how are we going to pay for it? And I'm comfortable with finding some other funding and not Got asking. a little nervous there. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Even in these final hours, that is my job. Thank you. And so I will uh, open it up to the public. Uh, and, and before you do that, uh, I just... Agree. Uh, the two from the advisory uh, going on to the, the main and flying for applications for uh, obviously. Um, no, because we already have those people yeah. um, for the advisory board. I needed that. Thank you. For the advisory, the current Lake County. 
currently yeah, go ahead. Okay, the current Lake County Drought Task Force, the advisory group. Again, that's just a group of um, stakeholders. So right now we have water purveyors, but there are some folks missing representing different uses. I know, for example, cannabis business, um, just to name a few off the top of my noggin, uh, parks, et cetera, um, schools. So there are some additional efforts that we would need to make to reach out to those different uses and users to see if they'd be interested and cross our fingers that they would be interested to sit on that advisory committee. Okay. And once we have at least reached a certain level, maybe not all those seats, it depends on if who, who raises their hands, then at that point they would choose two people to join us over mm -hmm. a, okay. Yeah. And then but with, I, I agree with that. I think that's, yeah. that's good. Because then I would envision, and um, Ms. Grant, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we would have to have some sort of charter document to bring back to the board since we would be complying with Brown Act of those sitting members or their designees for the advisory committee. Right. It would be a good idea to have bylaws or something akin to bylaws to set that out that your board would approve, make sure that the rules, the goals, and the composition are all within the, the, the determination that your board intended. We love bylaws. No bylaws. <laughs> Public input? I didn't know that I wasn't on it. I do not see a hand. Bring it back to the board for action. Where are we at here? So let me give this a shot. Uh, can I try and do all of this in one, or is that just not a possibility? No. Okay, here we go. First step, right. then. Uh, I move to reform the work group's name from County Comprehensive Drought Planning Work Group to the Lake County Drought Task Force, a Brown Act compliant board. Uh, and the participants of the original work group at this moment in time, until further notice, will remain the same. Second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next. I move to uh, reform the current late, well, now I just made another Lake County Drought Task Force, the previously known as Lake County Drought Task Force, a non-board appointed group of interested stakeholders as an advisory committee to the modified and reauthorized Lake County Drought Task Force, which we just did, um, creating the Lake County Drought Task Force Advisory Committee, also a Brown Act compliant board. Second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next. Uh, I don't think I need to do anything with that third one because that's just invitations. We'll be doing that. I believe you. we have consensus to, to fill all those positions on the advisory committee. Um, receiving recommendations from the uh, advisory committee. We've already had the discussion and stated what the purpose of that committee would be. I don't think we need to do anything. And... I think we're good. Do we need to give direction to um, to to fly the to to advertise Position. the positions and write the the bylaws for that group now? As a motion or as a consensus? You can you can do it by, you can do it by consensus because once you've created the committees, you can direct staff to perform those functions necessary for these these entities to operate pursuant to the Brown Act. Okay. As far as bylaws go, we have standards. County mm -hmm. Council has provided standards that can probably be adapted for most any use. But oh yes, what about your thoughts for the seats? Do you want to establish additional seats at this time beyond those that you presently have? And that would be by motion. So how many seats do we need on that advisory committee? So right now we say invite representatives from tribal, agriculture, cannabis, recreation, business, education, private well owners, environmental groups, and private water purveyors. That's nine. So That's one of each, good. and then you have how many existing? How many are on the 
So it's uh, whoever wants to come on and hang out on an hour Zoom call. So at the start of it, um, we had quite a few people, I'd say roughly 20-ish. Um, it's kind of died down a little bit in the last few months. So what I would like to do is I would like to get a head count of folks who, again, we were kind of in limbo waiting for guidance from the board of next steps with this group. Um, I would like to bring back a head count of who is, who's actually on the committee or advisory committee um, and who, who are we missing? And I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. Well, I think we set the number of seats mm -hmm. yeah. and then just remind everybody that comes to the meeting, you still come to the meeting right. as a public yes. member. Um, but I think we just should pick that today so that we can keep moving. So <laughs> nine? I, I think nine with the uh, categories as described gives us a good cross section of the community we want to hear from and have participating in this. So moved. Yeah, I agree. Second. <laughs> so I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any other uh, thing to address on this so side? So I just want to clarify, does Marina need to come back to your board or you've just established the seats in that motion? In the nine that, you, you, okay, so you established, so the, so the department had seats plus nine more, right? Nope, you're getting your committees mixed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm confused too, Carol. So the reason I'm asking is because our office needs to know what we're doing here so we can mm -hmm. support the recruitment and all that stuff. This is for the advisory committee, which has no... This is not the five... No county seats, but is going to be put together by water resources. Okay. now. And the 552 committee, the Senate bill, the one that's meeting that? Um, that is, is staying the way it is with department heads and two board members. Okay. And then once the advisory committee is established, then we will expand that by two seats from the advisory committee. Okay. Okay. But but the the new drought for, uh, work group is now a standing committee. So it's more than just a work group. The advisory committee is a standing committee. Yes. Both, Both are standing. Both, Both are standing committees. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. So, Marina, will you follow up with mm -hmm. staff in the administrative office, Kim, probably, Glad you to make sure she's <laughs> got it correctly? <laughs> perfect. Yep. Thank you. And I believe that the only thing that, um, that we would be getting back is the approval of the uh, members who have applied so that we can go ahead and point them to the advisory committee. Is that correct? As well as the bylaws, bylaws. normally yeah. the charter your board the approves yeah. all bylaws. Perfect. Okay. All right. With that, I think we are finished. And uh, thank you, thank you, Marina, for this presentation. Yes. Thank you, board. And I know that was confusing, so I appreciate you all. all. <laughs>